Wido. I'm Kento Tamba. People always told me I was a diligent guy. I graduated from a pretty decent school and landed a pretty good job after college. I was doing okay for myself. But when it came to girls, <laughs> I barely had any experience. And I was almost 30 now, so I knew something had to change. So one day I went to one of those matchmaking parties. There I met Aya. We really hit it off, and a few days later we started dating. Then we decided to get married. She's a great person. I loved her. But then, it didn't take long for me to realize we had completely different values. For instance, when we were looking for our apartment, I wanted to live somewhere nice and quiet, but she wanted to live in one of those condominiums. I wasn't sure about it at first, but she said she would do all the housework, so I decided to give her a shot. The condo was 30 stories tall. We went to the room on the 20th floor. It was pretty expensive, but it was for my loving wife, so... But then a year later... Hey, Kanto! What the hell? Why is my shirt all wrinkled up? Sorry, but we can't hang it outside, so... Then use an iron! You're so useless! Ugh! Nah, she was always like this. And she started making me do all the housework. And that wasn't all. We had dinner with our neighbors every once in a while, and when we did, she looked down on those who lived beneath her. And sucked up to those who lived above her. That was embarrassing to watch. Hey, Tamara! Yamanaka! Welcome! You guys live on the 5th and 7th floors, right? You must be exhausted. <laughs> Miss Shimizu, you live on the 25th floor, right? Welcome, come on in. This is embarrassing. Hey there. Oh, hey, Kaiko. Want to see? That's Kaiko. She lives on the same floor as us. She was a bit older than me. She was very polite, just like me, and she didn't really like coming to these dinner parties. But her husband, he was quite the character too. Ah, Hideke, welcome! Looking good as always! Thanks, Aya! You look great too! I guess that's why we both live on the 20th floor! Ha 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 husband had his own business. He ran this dating agency. He was a big hit with the ladies. Everyone said Hideki and Kaiko were the ideal couple, but... When we're alone, we're constantly fighting. He's barely home. He says he's always working, but... Who knows? I thought about confronting him many times, but I'm just a housewife, so... Oh, sorry to hear that. And the thing is, the only reason we're living here is... Hey, Kanto! Go say hi to Hidekai. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, I envy you two. You're the ideal couple! I wish my husband was reliable like you. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! I hate these dinner parties. Uh, back home. I'm exhausted. I hate talking to those losers that live on the lower floors. When are you gonna get a promotion anyways? I wanna move up to the penthouse. Look, um, uh, you should stop looking down on people like that. It's not right. Ugh, you just don't get it. It's all about what floor you live on. Now go clean up the party room. I don't want people to think my husband is lazy. Go! Look, I'm busy too, okay? I got stuff to do. Why don't you go yourself? Seriously? I want a divorce. Sign these. What? It's not big stream. You scared, huh? You're pathetic. Just do as I say, okay? If I leave you, you'll be alone for the rest of your life. So, don't forget that. Fine. She always did this, threatening me to divorce me. It was pretty annoying, but there wasn't much I could do. Oh, I'm tired of fighting. Hello there, let me help you. Ah, Mr. Sakaki. Hey, uh, thank you. Of course, I'm the concierge. This is my job, so... This is Mr. Sakaki. He was the concierge. He was really kind. He was always helping me out. You're so polite and well mad, Mr. Tamba. I told the owner about you. He said he was glad to have you as a tenant. <laughs> Thanks. The owner, he's, uh, he's really wealthy, right? Yeah, I believe so. He made all these communal spaces, hoping they would help the residents communicate better. <laughs> I see. I hate it here, but... Probably shouldn't say anything. I was hoping things would get better, but it didn't. It actually got worse. Then she started going out more often. Sometimes she headed out late at night after I got home from work. She always said she was just hanging out with friends, but I wasn't so sure. Did she cheat on me? I decided to hire a PI to look into her. But to my surprise, she was clean. She was just out with her friends. She wasn't cheating on me. I feel like such an asshole. What's wrong with me? Things between us were still awkward. I tried to fix things between us, but nothing was working. Then things at work started getting really busy. And a few weeks later, 
My boss told me to go on a business trip. That night when I got home, I told my wife about it, but then... You better not be lying to me. What? No, why would I do that? Whatever. Hey, don't eat out, okay? We gotta save up money to move, so... What? Why? What am I gonna have for dinner? And why do we have to move anyways? This place is good enough. Just be happy what you got. You talking back to me now? Fine. Divorce it is, then. Ugh. Huh, that's what I thought. Whatever, I gotta go. Hey, don't ignore me! Hey! I was getting tired of this. The next morning, I left the house without saying anything. Morning, Kanto. You going on a business trip or something? Ah, oh, Kaiko, hello. Yeah, I am. What a coincidence. My husband is going on a business trip as well. Oh, is that so? Well, I guess we'll both have some alone time for ourselves then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I headed out and hopped on a plane. But Aya, yeah, she kept calling me non-stop. I ignored her, but it was really distracting. Apologize right now and I'll forgive you? Seriously? What does she want from me? A few days later, I was finally back home. It was pretty late when I got there, but Aya wasn't home. And not only that, I found a piece of paper on the dining table. They were divorce papers. It even had Aya's signatures on them. She was definitely doing this to provoke me. That's it, I've had enough! Fine, if this is what she wants, then screw it! I signed the papers and headed out. She might be back any minute, so I decided to act fast. I walked out the door and headed to the city office. The city office was closed. The city office was closed at this hour. But you could still submit stuff. But then when I got down to the first floor, I realized something. Wait, I need another person to sign this. We needed someone else that can sign the divorce papers. I could ask my parents, but it was pretty late. I didn't know what to do. Then I heard someone talking in the concierge's room. Wait, I know. Maybe I can ask Mr. Sakaki. So I walked in, but then... What the? What are you doing here, Kaiko? Kaiko! Just a person we wanted to talk to! I was just about to call you. Um, can you take a look at this? Huh? She pointed to the computer and told me to watch this video footage. What the? The next morning, Aya came back home. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm getting ready to move. Huh? Wait, you mean we're moving to a higher floor? No, I'm leaving. You should pack your things too. The movies are coming soon. What? Aya started flipping out, but I didn't care. Then the movies arrived. I told Aya to step outside. I told her to stop yelling, but she didn't listen. Then... Kaiko, what is the meaning of this? Oh, just as I thought. Kaiko and her husband came out to the hallway as well. The other neighbors stepped out of their rooms too. Alright, since we're all here, let's just get this over with. Let's get Mr. Sakaki too. Alright. Huh? huh? They both seemed confused. We told them to follow us to the communal space where we used to have the dinner parties. Mr. Sakaki was already there waiting for us. Look, I don't know what this is about, but why get everyone else involved? Let's just talk about this in our room. Yeah, Kaiko, what is all this? And why is Mr. Sakaki here? I'm just here as a witness. Witness? For what? Look, we know, okay? You two are having an affair. What? <gasps> Turns out these two are having an affair, and it was all caught on tape. Our condo had several guest rooms for visitors. Our condo had several guest rooms for visitors, and Kaiko's husband was frequently renting them out. He told Mr. Sakaki that his relatives were visiting. He didn't think much of it at first, but then when he ran into Kaiko one day and asked her about her relatives, she had no idea what he was talking about. She knew nothing about any of this. Kaiko realized something was up, so she asked Mr. Sakaki if she could see the security tapes. She was right to be suspicious. Hideki and I were spending the night together in the guest room. And not just once. Turns out it's been going on for a while now. No wonder the PI didn't find anything. You two never left the building. Yeah, unbelievable. No, listen, it's not like that. Just stop. You really think you can talk your way out of this? Look, it was nothing serious, okay? Please, forgive me. It'll never happen again. Uh, it's too late. We're legally divorced now, so... Huh? What do you mean? The divorce papers you left on the table? I handed them in. Kaiko and Mr. Sakaki even came with me. Last night when they showed me the video, I headed to the city right afterwards and handed in the divorce papers. Then I decided to move out. Mr. Sakaki called the movers for me first thing in the morning. No. Sorry about all this. No worries. I was only doing my job. Hold on. You're just a concierge. How do you have access to the security cameras? Yeah, this can't be legal. 
This is an invasion of our privacy. We'll sue you. <sighs> you already forget? Why do you think we can afford this place in the first place? What? Why do you mean? We got permission from the owner. I called my father and asked him to talk to him. What? Kaiko's father? He was good friends with the owner of this condo. By the way, I already told your boss about this, and the owners of this place was furious with you. Damn it! I also told your family. They all know already. Get out and never come back. My lawyer will contact you soon. Here are the divorce papers. Sign them before you go. Kento, will you co-sign it as a witness? Uh, okay. Damn, I didn't know she was like this. Kento, please don't divorce me. I learned my lesson, please. And you're the one that always brought it up, Aya. Uh... And you're the one that signed it first. It's over, Aya. Get the hell out. I'll see you in court. No! She went back to live with her parents after that. The courts ruled in my favor, so she had to pay for damages, but she had no money of her own. So her parents had to pay me on her behalf. After that, they disowned her and kicked her out of the house. She lost everything. Now she lives in an old crappy apartment by herself. Sucks for her, but oh well. As for Deki, things weren't looking good for him either. His company went out of business. And with all the and with all the lawsuit on his hands, he was up to his neck in debt now. As for me, I bought a new apartment in a quiet neighborhood. I really liked it here. Ah, oh, this is much better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kaiko, hey! Kaiko moved out of the condo as well. We both wanted to live somewhere quiet, so she ended up moving into the same apartment as me. So we were neighbors again. Glad we're neighbors again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a rough couple of months, but glad everything worked out. Takio, promise me... Sis! Uh. Live an honest life from now on. I know you can do better. I will, sis, I promise. Hey! Hey, hey! I'm Takio Matsuyama. I'm a cab driver. It was pouring out. I was getting customers left and right. I didn't even have time to rest. Hey, are you sure you're going the right way? Yup, no worries. You better not be taking the long way on Bumpus! No, I'm not, sir. Thank you! I dropped him off and headed back to the city. The storm is getting stronger. I should have taken the bigger road. Then, out of nowhere, what the hell is she doing out there? There was this woman on the side of the road. I bought over and let her in. Uh, hi! You're soaking wet! Here, use this! Thank you. She took off her hood. No way! I couldn't believe it. She looked exactly like my late sister! So, uh... Oh, right, where to? She told me where she wanted to go. It was really far away. Um, it'll take about five hours. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Was she trying to walk there? She looked exhausted. She didn't have anything with her. She probably didn't have time to pack. I wonder what happened. No, I probably shouldn't ask. Um, it's gonna be a while, so you can sleep if you want. But, uh... You must be exhausted. How long have you been walking? Uh... Not sure what happened or how you ended up here, but no worries. You're in good hands now. I'll get you to your destination. Oh, thank you. She was starting to tear up. Then, a few minutes later, she fell asleep. A few hours later, the sun started to come up. The girl was still sleeping. I looked over at her. She was in pretty bad shape. Worse than I thought. Her hands and feet were covered in mud. Her face was pale. Should I just drop her off and forget about her? I don't know. I pulled over and called an old friend. Hey, Junichi! Long time no see. Um, I need to ask you a favor. We're here. Oh, right. I'm sorry I fell asleep. Then she saw the fair meter and froze up. Um... I'm really sorry, but I don't have that much money on me. What? What are you talking about? Huh? Look, I can tell you've been through a lot. You don't have to pay me, all right? Go on. Oh, thank you. But I'll pay you back, I promise. Huh? Wait, where am I? We weren't actually there yet. Well, uh, my wife and his friend, they live in the area, and... I thought you might want to rest up a bit before heading to your destination. What? But... Your clothes are still wet, and you must be starving too. 
I already talked to them. They said it was cool, so what do you say? After a few seconds, she nodded and thanked me. Hey, you're here. You want a beer? I told you I'm working. This is Junichi, my old friend. Welcome. Come on in. I filled up the bathtub. Go, take a shower. That's Yoko, Junichi's wife. What? But I... Come on, it's fine. They were both really friendly. The girl kept thanking them both. Ah, oh, thank you so much for this. I'm Mai. It's really nice to meet you both. Yoko took her to the bathtub. Then Junichi said to me, So, uh, who is she? Is she related to you or something? Nah, she's just a customer. She looks exactly like your sister. I know. I think she's in some kind of trouble. Thanks for helping me out. Of course, anything for you. She looks a lot better now. Not sure what happened, but you both look hungry. I'll make you something right away. Thank you, Yoko. Yoko headed to the kitchen and made several dishes for us. Mm, this is delicious. Good to hear. You like it, Mai? Yeah, I've never had anything this good in my life. You're good at giving compliments. <laughs> Much better than Takio. Uh, shut up, man. It was nice having company. Mai was starting to smile more. But then, out of nowhere, she started crying. What is it, Mai? Sorry, I'm fine. It's just that nobody's ever been this nice to me. Then she started telling us about what happened. Her father was a drunk. He hung out with some bad people. He was a lowlife. After he got fired from his job, he started leeching off his wife. But a few years later, she passed away. After that, he started leeching off of Mai. I worked all kinds of jobs. Delivering newspapers, convenience stores, you name it. I didn't see a dime, though. Dad always took everything, so... What's wrong with him? Some father he is. So she finally decided to make a run for it. She was heading towards her grandfather's house, and I found her on the side of the road. I'm so sorry to hear all that. <laughs> Mai, go get some sleep. You need to rest. Yes, your laundry's still wet anyways. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yoko took Mai to her bedroom. Yunichi, I need another favor. Anything. She said her father hung out with some bad people. Can you look into it? All right, I'll see what I can find. I'll call some of my old friends. Thanks, man. She got up a few hours later. I drove her to her grandfather's house. Is this the place? Yeah, I think so. I followed her to the door, but... What the... The nameplate... It's different. She rang the doorbell anyways. A man came out, but she had never seen him before. Turns out he moved here three years ago. He didn't know anything about Mai's grandfather. What now? Want to go to the city office? Maybe we can ask him about your grandpa. I don't know. When mom died, dad filed for divorce. So legally, you're not related to your grandfather anymore. That's right. There were other ways to find out where he lived, but they were all really expensive and time consuming. Do you have any other relatives you can ask for help? No. When her mom died, her relatives had this huge argument over who was going to take care of her. Everyone knew her father wasn't fit to take care of her, but nobody was willing to help. Her grandfather was the only one who cared about her. He offered to take her in, but Mai's father refused. He needed her to work for him. It's been years anyways. It's no use. Listen, growing up, I was a bad kid. My parents were useless, and it's a long story, but my, my point is, I know how you feel. Huh? They both disappeared into thin air one day. It was horrible. My sister, she was the only one who cared about me. She raised me single-handedly. But then she got this heart disease and died. Why do the good die so young? My, you want to end it with your dad, right? That's why you ran from home, right? Yeah. Then let me help. But I don't want to be a bother. Please, I insist. I always wanted to do something to thank my sister for all the things she did for me. But she died before I could do that. Just please let me help you. I want to see you through this. Tokyo. After a few seconds of silence, she nodded and thanked me. I called Yoko and updated her on my situation. Then I asked Mei to take me to her house. It was a really old apartment. Her room was on the second floor. We're ready. Let's go. Okay. I used her key and opened the door. What the? 
As soon as I opened the door, this big guy walked out. Looks like he was on his way out. My, where have you been? And who the hell is this? What the hell do you want? I'm a cab driver. You're a father, right? You need to pay for a cab fare. What? Why'd you take a cab, mate? You don't even make that much money. She had no choice. I'd do the same if I had a father like you. What did you say, asshole? Listen, you piece of shit. I know people, okay? Some of my friends are yakuza. Oh, no, I'm so scared. You think I'm kidding? I'm serious. Uh. Tokyo, your finger. Huh? Oh. What the? Where, where are you? Ouch. Just for the record, you hit me first, so. So you're connected with the yakuza, huh? Well, the thing is, I see one myself. Dad! You can't run. What, Dad? You got a minute? We just want to talk. Help! Junichi was waiting for him under the stairs. Him and his crew had him surrounded. Hey, man, you all right? Yeah, thanks for this. This is Toguro Mami. He was an old friend of mine. He was a former Yakuza, just like me. He left the game years ago, but he still knew people. So I called him up and asked him to send some back of our way. The cops should be here any minute. Good. This guy said he was connected with the Yakuza, so... Mm, really? You sure about that? A uh, lad! I don't know anyone! I just know some guys! They're a local gang or something! I'm sorry! You lad! You're pathetic! Maybe we should hand you over to the Yakuza anyways. They'll probably throw you into the ocean. I'm sorry! Please forgive me, please! Don't apologize to us, you idiot. Apologize to your daughter! He got down on the floor and started apologizing to Mai over and over again. Then the cops arrived and took him away. Alright then. Takio, guys, thank you so much for this. No worries, sorry to scare you like that. I used to be Yakuza back in the days. I quit after my sister passed, but... No worries, I wasn't scared. I knew you were a good person, so... She thanked me and my friends over and over again. Then, a few weeks later, we finally found her grandparents. She was in good hands now. Good for her! Yeah, I'm glad everything worked out. Have a nice life, Mai. We were all really happy for her. Then, a few years later, I got a call from this customer. She specifically requested me. Then... Takio, you remember me? Long time no see! Mai, wow, how have you been? I finally graduated from high school. I even got a job now. I just had to tell you. After the incident a few years ago, her grandparents legally adopted her. She was able to cut all ties with her father. Then she looked me up and called me. That night, if I hadn't run into you, who knows where I'd be right now? <laughs> yeah, good thing I found you. It's all thanks to you, Takio. You saved me. I don't know about that. Huh? You're the one that waved to my car. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have seen you. You saved yourself, Mai. She started crying a bit. <laughs> Thanks. She said with a smile. She started calling me for rides after that. That was nice and all, but... I want to spend more time with you, Takio. Oh, I see. That's fine and all, but you changed, Mai. She wanted to date me, but I was a former Yakuza member. She deserved better. I thought she'd be happier without me, so I tried to talk her out of it, but... That's my call, not yours. And you said you wanted to see me through this, right? Huh? That's not what I meant. Too bad. Oh boy, what do I do now? Oh well, I guess everything worked out, sort of. I'm Shohei Endo, a 27-year-old office worker. This meat is delicious! Where did you get it? I ordered it online. Goes great with beer. It's great! This handsome guy is Hiroki Watanabe, a friend of mine from college. The guy in the glasses is my colleague, and his name is Kenji Otsuka. We enjoy camping and get together like this a few times a month. Kenji joined us after Hiroki and I started doing it together. It was when we were in a good mood after a few drinks. Uh, excuse me. We'd like to borrow some of your seasonings. Sorry, we've never been camping before. We brought all the food, but we forgot the seasoning. Oh, I see. Here you go. Would you like to eat with us? We've got a full fire going on over there! Really? Sure, it's more fun with more people. Thank, Thank you. you! To be honest, if it was just me, I wouldn't have been able to invite all these beauties. 
It's all thanks to Hiroki and Kenji. The women were Riho, Chisato, and Miharu. We exchanged contact information and continued to hang out together. After a few more times of camping together, we grew closer and eventually fell in love. Actually, I'm going out with Chisato. What? You already asked her out? Yeah, we went out for a drink after we split up the other night. Good looking guys know what they're doing. I'm thinking of confessing to Miharu too. You should confess to Riho, Shohei. What? Uh, uh, I, I can't. I can tell by looking at you. You like Riho, don't you? Yeah, it's obvious. We'll leave you two alone, so do your best. Oh. oh. Alright. I can do it too. They encouraged me, and I confessed to Riho. And she was embarrassed, but she said yes too. Then Kenji started going out with Miharu, and we each became a couple. After that, the six of us would have barbecues and go out to play. Triple dates were always super fun. But even though we were happy, there was a problem. For some reason, Kenji, who started going out with Miharu, started talking down to me. We had an important business meeting the other day, but Shohei left his documents at work. What? That's crazy! I delivered them to him. Shohei is totally useless without me. What are you talking about? I wasn't involved in that business meeting, and Yamada-san was the one who forgot. Stop talking nonsense! What? Really? Well, it's true that you are sometimes out of it. Like last week. Come on, Kenji. Let's not talk about that anymore. Yeah, let's talk about something more fun. Kenji got corrected and started to sulk. He seems to be trying to improve his own reputation by humiliating me. I know you want to look good in front of your girlfriend, but it's annoying. Bad things kept happening. What? I've been busy with work, so I wasn't able to see her, which kept happening and... She broke up with me! I see. Well, Chisato was just that kind of woman. Hiroki, you're handsome and good at your job. I'm sure you'll get another girlfriend. Yeah, there's tons of women out there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I guess there's no point in dwelling on it. That's the spirit! Don't be too down! Thanks! Best friends are what you need! Kenji was cheering Hiroki up at that time. But when Hiroki wasn't around... He's getting full of himself, so he got what he deserves. Come on, don't say terrible things like that. Hiroki's actually depressed. What? But you're thinking the same thing, aren't you? That he deserves it? No way, I'm not! Who knows? You've been Hiroki's friend since college, right? He's good looking. He probably just thinks of you as someone who can make him look better. Of course not! You... There are some things you can and can't say! Yeah, yeah, you're a really good boy, aren't you, Shohei? Huh? You... Don't get so mad, I'm just kidding! I wonder if Kenji's getting carried away because he's doing well with Miharu. I didn't feel this bad when the three of us guys were hanging out. Maybe this happens when women are involved. Hiroki and Chisato broke up, and Kenji's like this. Maybe we should stop getting together with everyone. I didn't invite everyone and only met with my girlfriend, Riho. But then Riho started acting strange. How about the weekend? I'm free both Saturday and Sunday. Sorry, I have some plans. I see. More and more often, she declined my invitations like this. That said, I can't force her to go out. That day, I was walking around town going alone, thinking of going to the movies to get away from it all. That's when... It's Riho. Who's that guy next to her? No way! Hiroki was walking with Riho! And they were walking arm in arm, as if they were close! No way! Trembling with anger, I followed them and went into the karaoke bar. Why are Riho and Hiroki... I sent Riho a line asking, What are you doing right now? But although the line was read, there was no reply. At night, she finally replied. I was tired, so I was sleeping. Darn! You were playing with Hiroki! What do you mean you were sleeping? I couldn't follow Riho all the time because I had work to do. I heard there was a handyman in the neighborhood who could take care of the investigation for a reasonable price. So I asked him. I gathered the evidence. Your girlfriend Riho was meeting a guy named Hiroki every weekday night. Thank you for getting the evidence together so quickly. And here. This too. What? This is... On the weekend, 
I called Hiroki up after work. He seemed to be interested in my grim face. Kenji took it up too, saying, This looks interesting, doesn't it? And the three of us ended up having a drink. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. You got something to say? Hurry up. I can't go home because I'm anxious about it. Kenji's smirking attitude annoyed me. But now wasn't the time to worry about him. You're meeting with Riho, right, Hiroki? What? What do you mean? You're cheating with her? I confirmed it with Riho. She easily admitted it. I had already confronted Riho with the evidence and confirmed their relationship. That's photoshopped, isn't it? Of course not. The investigator says he saw you guys go into a hotel. Are you crazy to doubt your own girlfriend? That's my line. Are you crazy enough to have an affair with my best friend? When I kept questioning her, Riho, who probably gave up, admitted that she had been meeting with Hiroki. Hiroki wanted my advice because he wanted to get back together with Shisato. So you got into that kind of relationship with him while you were giving him advice? Because Hiroki's handsome. You can't leave a good-looking guy in a bad situation. Huh. I didn't know you were such a skank. I didn't think you were childish enough to hire a detective either. Let's break up. Yeah, fine. Bye. That's how my relationship with Riho ended. I broke up with Riho because of you! How are you going to make up for it? Sorry. Hiroki, knowing he did something wrong, kept nodding his head and repeatedly apologized to me. But Kenji was in such a heavy mood. Aw, oh, come on, don't be so uptight. Everyone makes mistakes. Kenji, you shut up. Don't be so angry, Shohei. Forgive Hiroki. Maybe it's because he's been drinking, or maybe he's feeling superior because he's the only one who's happy and in love. Kenji patted me on the back and said, Come on, make it up with him. If that's the kind of attitude he's going to take, then fine. I wasn't sure whether to say this or not, Kenji. Huh? What is it? Just so you know, you're a victim too. Huh? I showed Kenji a picture. Hey, isn't this Miharu? Why is she going to the hotel with Hiroki? That's right. The handyman also handed me a picture of Kenji's girlfriend, Miharu, and Hiroki entering a hotel room. The handyman remembered Miharu's face in the group photo I had given him at the time of the request to confirm the description, and he took a picture of it just in case. From that point on, it was a hell of a drama. What's going on? Why were you seeing Miharu? I'm sorry. I wanted to get back together with Chisato, so I asked Miharu what I should do. In that vein, you approached Miharu the same way as you did with Riho. Don't play with me! You messed with my Miharu! I'll never forgive you! Oh, come on, Kenji. Everyone makes mistakes. Forgive him. How can I forgive him? Outsiders like you, shut up! Forgive him. That was your line. Kenji, in a frenzy of rage, seemed to have no language of the heart. It was about to become a brawl, and I knew we were causing a nuisance in the restaurant. So I paid the bill and dragged them out. I'll never forgive you! Just get down on your knees! I'm sorry, but Miharu says she hates it when you're noisy like this. Shut up! What do you know about Miharu? I don't care anymore. Do as you please. Kenji's voice was echoing behind me, yelling. But I didn't want to get involved anymore, so I quickly left. Afterwards, Kenji apparently sued Hiroki for inflicting emotional distress. Shohei, can you do something about Kenji? I'm getting abusive phone calls and messages every day, and it's interfering with my work! What do you mean, do something? There's no way I would. And I'm sorry, but it's not my problem anymore. Don't say that! We're best friends, aren't we? How can you say that after you slept with my girlfriend? Sorry. I don't want anything to do with you or Kenji ever again. Just settle this between the two parties. Bye. After that, apparently Hiroki and Kenji got into a muddle of court cases, and it started interfering with their lives. They both became unable to concentrate on their work, and made a series of mistakes. Hiroki was demoted from a bright sales position to another department. Kenji was given a pay cut because of a series of ordering mistakes and disrespect to clients. By the way, the women who had relations with Hiroki... Because you made it so Hiroki and Chisato wouldn't get back together, Hiroki even went for Miharu! It's your fault! Kenji was persistent in demanding an apology from Riho. 
Riho was terrified by Kenji's presence, so she consulted the police. Kenji kept contacting Miharu too. I heard them talking in the break room at work once. Hey, Miharu! I'll forgive you if you get down on your knees! We can start over! I heard from the wind that Miharu is also consulting with the police, and a lawyer, after being distressed by the daily calls. I was right to get out of that. I don't want anything to do with those guys ever again. After that, I started enjoying solo camping. I really enjoyed hanging out with the guys, though. I learned the hard way that relationships between men and women can get messy and irreversible. Um, excuse me, do you have a bandage or something? I cut my foot on a rock. Yes, I do. I also have some disinfectant if you'd like to use it. Oh, thank you very much, that would be great. Ugh! Whoa! I I'm sorry. No, uh, thank you. Solo camping is quite nice. I hope to enjoy camping in peace and not get into trouble from now on. I'm Shin Tamura. I'm 32. I work in a self-defense army. My wife passed away. I was out of town on a rescue mission. I got back as soon as I could, but it was too late. Mom! Kate. Dad! Mom! She's gone! You, don't worry. I got you. I'm right here. I met my wife Kate back when I was in 12th grade. I wanted to go work for the self-defense army, which meant I had to get into the National Defense Academy, but uh, my grades weren't so good. So my parents hired a tutor for me, and that's how I met her. She was my tutor. She started to grow on me. I really liked her, but... Um, do you have a boyfriend? Huh? Yeah, why? Oh, nothing! <laughs> uh. Look, I'm not into young guys, okay? Come on now, let's get back to work. She rejected me right off the bat. After that, I got accepted to my first choice school. I wanted to thank Kate in person, but I could no longer reach her. I tried calling her, but her phone was no longer in service. I wonder what happened to her. I studied and trained hard day in and day out. There was so much work to do in order to become a member of the self-defense army. After that, I got accepted into the JG SDF, Japan Ground Self-Defense Force, and trained hard every day. Then a few years later, I was out of the bar with my colleagues one night. What the? I couldn't believe it. Um... Huh? I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but is your name Kate? Yeah... Wait, Shin? It was her, I couldn't believe it! My colleagues decided to call it a night. I stayed behind and had dinner with Kate and her daughter. She was a mother now. This is my daughter, Yui. Uh, hello there! Hi! I'm a single mom. Oh, I see. Then she told me what happened. But after I got into college, she found out that she was pregnant. So she got married, but her husband was a no-good lowlife. He spent all of her hard-earned money and cheated on her every chance he got. Their marriage didn't last very long. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, yeah. You never know what life throws at you. We started seeing each other more after that. When I had the day off from work, I took Kate and her daughter out to all kinds of places. Then about six months later... Kate, look! I'll protect you and your daughter from now on. So, will you marry me? Me? You sure? Yes, I'm sure. You're the one for me. Oh, thank you. She said yes! I was so excited. My parents told me to think it over, mostly because she was once married and had kids. That didn't matter to me. I'm going to make her the happiest girl in the world. I was finally with a girl in my dreams. It was so nice having a family. Just sitting at the dining table and eating dinner with them filled me up with joy. But there was one thing that was troubling me. Her daughter, Yui. She wasn't letting me in. I guess she needed some more time to adjust. At first I felt a bit worried. Maybe she didn't like me, but when I told Kate... I don't think it's personal, but her first dad was an awful man, so maybe that's why. I see. It must have been tough for her. No worries, she'll come around. No need to rush. You're right. She just needed some time to process all this. I decided to give it some time. Then one day, I got a call from Kay while I was on break. Hey, tomorrow Yui is going to this concert, and... I was supposed to go with her, but I caught a cold. Could you go with her instead? Tomorrow? Uh, sure. I think I'll be able to go home by six or so. The next day. Sorry I'm late, Yui. There you are. Finally, let's go! This was a big opportunity for me. It was a great chance to get to know her better. Well, look at the stadium. It's huge. I know, right? I can't wait. Who's your favorite member? 
Takaru, the guy playing the guitar. He's so good and handsome. She seems so excited. I've never seen her like this before. Then on our way home, then on our way home. That was pretty good. And the guy Takaru, he's got some skills. That was a sick guitar solo. Ah, uh, good to hear, Dad. Wait, what did you say? Did you just call me Dad? I don't like to repeat myself. Pay attention to the road. <laughs> All right. She finally called me Dad. I was so happy. A year later, she was in high school now. She said she wanted to join the band club, so we headed out into the city one weekend to buy a guitar. I used to play guitar when I was your age. What? No way! Yubi and I were really close now. It took some time, but it was definitely worth the wait. But then, my phone rang. Hello? Tamora, sorry to call you on your day off, but this is an emergency. Our team has been assigned to the disaster relief mission in a prefecture. Can you come in right away? Of course, on my way. Yubi, I'm really sorry, but something came up at work. Ah, no worries. Just be careful. Thanks. I might not be able to pick up the phone for a while, so can you let mom know? All right. Thanks. Well, then I'll see you later. So I headed out to work. The next day, I arrived at A Prefecture. It was a mess. It was hit by a big earthquake and a rainstorm back to back. There were still hundreds of people missing. I gotta help them! It was a race against time. We worked nonstop for days. We were allowed to bring our phones on the mission, but I didn't want my phone to run out of battery, so I kept it off while I was working. Then, two days later. Great job, guys! Backup has arrived, so you guys can take some time off! Get some rest! I turned on my phone. I had dozens of missed calls from Yui. Something wasn't right. Yui, hello? Sorry I couldn't pick up. Dad? What happened, Yui? Mom, she's been in an accident. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I told my boss right away and headed back home as soon as I could. Kate! Dad! Mom, she fought hard, but she... No, I'm so sorry, Kate. I should have been here for you. When she arrived at the hospital, she was still alive. She fought really hard to come back to us, but she didn't make it. She passed away a few hours before I arrived. I should have been here for her. For my family! A few days later, we had her funeral. Being a member of the self-defense army came with a lot of responsibility. I knew the risks when I signed up, but still, I couldn't believe this was happening to me. Shin, you got a minute? Yeah. Kate's parents came up to me. You had told me about your disaster relief mission. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have been here. No, don't apologize. You were doing your job. Be proud of that. Thank you, sir. Look, I know being a member of the self-defense army comes with a lot of responsibility. Sometimes you have to leave home for a very long time. I don't have a problem with that, but Yui, she can't be left alone right now. And technically, you two aren't even related by blood. Look, you're still young. You can still start over, start a new family. Wait, well, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, we want to look after you from now on. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. But I knew he wasn't trying to offend me or anything. He was just thinking about what's best for his granddaughter. Look, I appreciate your honesty. I really do, but I'm her father. I'll do everything I can for her. So please, please let me take care of her. But I don't know, are you sure? Look, on my way back here, I made a decision. What? I'm quitting the self-defense army. I'm going to get a normal job so I can spend more time with Yui. Finally, they said okay and decided to give me a chance. So, I quit the self-defense army, got a normal office job, and started my new life with Yui. All right, can you do the laundry? I'll get dinner started. Got it. We did house chores together, but I wasn't very good at it, and neither was Yui. It took us a while to get the hang of it. I couldn't believe Kate was able to do all this on her own. It wasn't easy at first, but we kept at it. We still missed her a lot, but we tried our best to keep our heads up. On the weekends, we tried our best to get out of the house. But I looked pretty young for my age, and Yui looked much older. We probably didn't look like a father and a daughter. Sometimes people pointed at us and talked about us behind our backs. Sometimes a cop stopped me to ask for a few questions. But every time something like this happened, Yui said things like, Dad, what's the hold up? Hurry up! To let everyone know that I was her father. She didn't care what others thought of us. 
She was a strong girl. She was just like her mother. I was so proud of her. We took it one day at a time. We still miss Kate like crazy, but we did everything we could to move forward. Then, ten years later, Kate said to me, Um, Dad? Yeah? There's someone I'd like you to meet. She was a grown woman now. I knew this day would come, but honestly, I wasn't ready for this. I told her to bring him over to the house. I wanted to meet him in person and make sure he was worthy of her. I asked him a lot of questions. He told me to stop, but I couldn't. I had to be sure. By the time I was done with them, they were both exhausted. After much thought, I decided to trust him. He seemed like a decent guy. I'm serious about her. Please, let me marry your daughter. All right, all right, you win. Take good care of her, please. I will. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Then the big day was finally here. I was so nervous. I could barely walk straight. Yui and her guests were laughing at me. Ugh, this is so embarrassing. It was a beautiful wedding. Yui seemed so happy and full of joy. It was the best day of my life. Then, as the wedding was about to come to an end, the host said Yui had wrote a letter for me. Ugh, I told her not to do this. Then... Dad, thank you for raising me. When you first married my mom, I didn't like you, to be honest. My first dad... He was such a terrible person. I had trouble trusting people. That's why I said all those mean things to you. I'm really sorry. Remember that time you took me to that concert? It was our first time going out together. I had so much fun that night. And when mom died, I was so sad, but... When you said you wanted to keep living with me, it made me so happy. And whenever I was feeling down, you always cheered me up. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, Dad. So, thank you. Thank you for everything. We might not be related by blood, but that doesn't matter. You're the best father a girl could ever ask for. I love you, Dad. Everyone started clapping. Everyone was crying. That was beautiful. Got anything you want to say to her? The MC asked me, so I said, Yui, you're the best daughter ever. I love you too. I couldn't stop crying. Then the wedding came to an end. After the wedding, I told Yui and her husband to get in my car. I wanted to take them somewhere. They were still wearing their tuxedo and wedding dress. Where are we? This is my mom's grave. I wanted her to see me in my dress. You look beautiful, Yui. Thank you for everything, Mom. If it wasn't for you and Dad, I wouldn't be here today, so... Thank you! I love you so much! I'll make you the happiest girl in the world! Please watch over us, Mom! You hear that, Kate? You guys all grown up now! I think I did a pretty good job raising her, don't you think? <laughs> love you, baby! That was a rough couple of years, but glad everything worked out. My name is Koichi Shibata, 48 years old. I graduated from high school and have been working in the distribution warehouse of Tamashiro Market for more than 20 years, managing and delivering products. I have been to various branch offices within the company, but not long ago, I was able to come back to this place of memories, in the headquarter warehouse of this Tamashiro Market. I never thought I'd be able to work with you again, Koichi. I remember those days. He's an old colleague of mine, Kusunoki. He's a friend of mine with whom I've shared hardships when I was still young. But it's not only because of my former colleagues that I have feelings for this place. Everyone cares about Sarah, too! Is she doing well? Oh, uh... Yes, I raised my daughter, Sarah, by myself. A daughter who is not related to me by blood, here in this warehouse. That was when I was in my 20s, and this Tamashira market was still a small company. My boss, who was the leader of the company at the time, brought a woman with a young child to the warehouse. My sister is in trouble. Can you guys help her? This is how I met Kumi, who would become my wife, and my daughter, Sarah. Kumi's ex-husband was a lousy man and ran from home as soon as he found out she was pregnant. So she decided to raise her daughter, Sarah, on her own and started working from morning till night. Kumi, however, was born with a fragile body and frequently fell ill. We learned of the situation and decided to cooperate with them as best we could. Someone was always working here in this warehouse, 
so it could become a 24-7 daycare center, so to speak. At a time when compliance was not so strict, the president of Tamashiro Market gave his permission, and the entire warehouse staff began to take care of Sarah. Among them, I spent a lot of time with Sarah, and she became especially attached to me. Gradually, I became closer with her mother, Kumi, and at the proposal of my bosses, we got married. And Sarah, who was still very young, thought I was her real father, and everyone kept the truth from her. However, the marriage where the three of us could spend time together was too short. Kumi, perhaps due to the strain she had put on herself, suddenly died a few years later due to a chronic illness. There was no way I could tell the grieving Sarah that I wasn't her real father. After that, it was everyone at the warehouse who supported us. At a certain point, Sarah must have thought of this place as her second home. I want to play with the uncles there tomorrow too! I still remember her saying that often. Later, as Sarah grew up, my work got busier, and I temporarily left the warehouse. Then when Sarah entered puberty, she stopped talking about the warehouse. I mean, she doesn't even talk to me anymore. When I rushed home after a night shift, Sarah was always getting ready for work. Sorry I'm late. I'll hurry up and make breakfast now. It's fine. But you haven't eaten anything. I told you before I'm not a child anymore. I can take care of myself. Oh yeah, Sarah? Everyone at the warehouse wanted you to come show your face again. Huh? She must have forgotten by now. Sarah graduated from high school and started working this year. She was an honor student with excellent grades, but she doesn't talk much, and I honestly don't know what she's thinking. She used to be so sweet, but now she just thinks I'm annoying. Then one day, Sarah suddenly said she had someone she wanted to get engaged to, and she would bring him home. Oh, what kind of person is he? He's a senior from my high school. His name is Tamashiro Masaki. What? The other man was Masaki, the son of the president of our company. I heard the president made him go to a normal public high school so he wouldn't spoil his son. I heard he went to the same high school as my daughter, but I didn't think they'd get engaged, let alone be in a relationship. She's only 16, and she wants to leave home already? I've already decided. Keep the state open then. And... Tamashiro Market is now a big company. Masaki was said to be the next president of the company. But how would he feel if he knew his father-in-law worked in his company's warehouse? I wasn't sure if I should talk to my colleagues at the warehouse, but I didn't want to cause a scene. Besides, many of the people who used to take care of Sarah were on the day shift. Just a few days after Masaki came to greet me, there would be a general meeting at the warehouse. So I decided to talk about it then. Then, on the day of the greeting, Masaki bowed his head deeply and seemed like a better young man than I had imagined. I was anxious, but I was relieved when I saw him. The drinks were flowing, and the topic of conversation turned to their high school days. Sarah was the Madonna of the school. All the boys were attracted to her. Oh, stop it, Masaki. Hmm? There's no more alcohol. I'll go get some. Oh, I'll go. It's okay. Don't you want to talk to him as men? All right. Well, be careful. I know. And when Sarah left... Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah? Is it true that Sarah was raised in that warehouse when she was little? Well, you're right. It's not an exaggeration to say that she was raised there. It was tough. But now, it's a good memory. Are you serious? How awful! What? I mean, the father is a high school graduate working part-time in a warehouse, and he leaves his daughter at the warehouse and abandons her? What a lousy parent. Masaki? I'm not a part-timer, and I raised her properly, too. Oh, is that an excuse? Like it's okay because you're not actually her father? What? Perhaps President Tamashiro thought that I had already told Sarah she wasn't my biological child, so he probably told Masaki. But I didn't tell the truth to the still 18-year-old Sarah. Don't be hasty. I haven't told her yet. But in exchange... What? Can you not come to the wedding? I want you and everyone at the warehouse to cut ties with Sarah. Is that what Sarah wants? Yeah, she told me. She doesn't want anything to do with those people anymore. No way. Well, she wants to marry me, who's the next president, and cut ties with you guys. 
Don't get in the way of your daughter, who's trying to get off the bottom of the barrel. Ugh. In the end, I couldn't say anything back, and Sarah came back. Then Masaki calmly returned to being a good-natured young man. In front of his father, the president, and Sarah, he must be hiding the backstage face he had earlier. After that, Masaki left as if nothing had happened. Did he say anything? What? No, nothing. Huh. I was thinking about what he said earlier, and kind of brushed it off. A few days later, at a general meeting in the warehouse, I reported my daughter's engagement to the people who used to take care of Sarah. They were all as happy as if they were their own. However, when I told them that it was Masaki who was the next president of the company, their faces began to cloud over. Actually, I didn't know this since I worked night shifts, but Masaki would often come to the warehouse during the day and skip work. He also swore at the warehouse employees and used them as his errand boys. He had a bad reputation, though no one could say anything strongly about it because he was the president's son. I knew it. What? Koichi? You knew? No, it's just that... When he came to the house for a greeting, I told him everything Masaki told me. No way. I can't believe she would say that! That's what I thought at first, too. But maybe I just didn't know what Sarah was thinking. Her attitude hasn't been so good lately, either. Everyone who thought they would be able to see Sarah again with a smile were also terribly disappointed. But in the end, they came to an agreement to respect Sarah's happiness. That night, I stopped Sarah. It would be hard for her to say it herself, so I decided to do it myself. Sarah, I know it's probably a while away, but I'm not going to the wedding, and neither is anyone else at the warehouse. What? Once you're married, you're free to do whatever you want. I'm sorry for all the trouble I caused you, but it was too painful to say out loud. So I left the place as if running away. It can't be helped. I'm only a foster father after all. The marriage talk seemed to be going well after that, and Sarah was going to greet Masaki's parents the next week. But oddly enough, the place seemed to be inside Tamashiro Market's office. I wonder if Masaki wants to show them how he works. Dad, you come too. What? No, but- Just come, and there's someone else I want you to call. Sarah made a strange request to me right then and there. Okay. As usual, I didn't know what she was thinking, but I had no choice but to agree to her serious look. And then came the day of the promised greeting. I left the warehouse in my work clothes, as Sarah had told me, and was in the conference room of the adjacent Tamashira Market's headquarters. As I waited, not knowing why, it was Masaki who showed up. Because... Sarah called me. And us too, of course! Huh? What's going on? I came here because Sarah said everyone was already waiting for me. Anyway, you guys just leave! No, but... Don't ruin the big day! I don't know why we were invited too. But you're pretty talkative, aren't you? Do you even know who I am? I could fire you in a heartbeat! I know that, Mr. President-elect. But let me ask you something. Does Sarah really want to marry you? Of course she does! She's the one who came to me! I can't believe that. That's right! And there's no way she would say she wants to cut ties! Guys... You guys just want to believe that! Sarah said it! She doesn't want anything to do with the bottom of the barrel! I never said that. Sarah?! Misaki, I knew you were saying unnecessary things to my father. No, that's not it. What I said before was... I thought it was strange the way my father looked after you came for the greeting, or the way he suddenly said he wouldn't come to the wedding. I tried it, and I was right. So this is your true nature. What? You set me up? But wait a minute, Sarah! I was just speaking for you, wasn't I? Of course you don't want these people here! Not at all. The reason I decided to marry you was for my father and everyone else's sake, too. What? It's not true that I came to you. You want me to call a friend of mine to testify? That's- According to what Sarah made him confess afterwards, it was all a lie, so Masaki could get rid of all of us who were close to Sarah. The reason why they got together in the first place was because Masaki fell in love with Sarah at first sight and wooed her several times. He was acting like a gentleman in front of Sarah, who was smitten with his enthusiasm, agreed to the relationship, and, well, it came to this point. 
And the talks of getting engaged weren't even about wanting to leave the house. <sighs> I'm sorry, Dad. I wanted to get married and start a family. I wanted to expand the family for you. Sarah! And I thought that if I married the next president of Tamashiro Market, I could give back to everyone at the warehouse. Give back to us? I've never forgotten a single day I spent in that warehouse, you know? I never forgot about my uncles who hung out with me, my dad who worked so hard, and even my mom. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry, I was wrong. When you marry me, I'll treat the people at the warehouse well and- No, I'm not marrying you anymore. What? How can I marry someone who makes fun of my father and everyone else? And you lied to me in the first place. Huh? Y your father's the one who's lying to you too! Hey, wait! Ah, I'll tell you! Hey, Sarah, he's not your real father! He's been lying to you all this time! Oh, so it was true after all. What? I don't even look like him. I can tell being alive for 18 years. You've been lied to your whole life! I mean, it's rather amazing that they brought me up to this point even though we're not blood related. I have nothing but gratitude. That's a good point, Sarah. What? That voice? I wish my stupid son could learn from you. Father? Even mom? Apparently, Sarah had suggested Masaki's parents that she would test him and were listening to everything outside the room. Naturally, when the president found out what was going on behind the scenes, he was furious. Masaki, you know what's going to happen. Not only were the engagement and the next president's position cancelled, but he was also told on the spot that he would be kicked out of the Tamashiro market too. All the hard work I put in. What hard work, you fool? I'm sorry! And when the situation calms down, Sarah came to me and had tears in her eyes. I'm sorry I haven't been... Honest with you, I couldn't say it well, but I'm really grateful. Thank you for bringing me up until now, Dad. Sarah! Thank you to everyone at the warehouse, too. I'll be back. Hey, we'll always be waiting. After that, Masaki was taken by the president to the warehouse to apologize again, and then disappeared from the company. He was told he'd be disinherited if he caused another problem, and is now living a quiet life as a part-timer. As for me... I'm still rushing home after working the night shift. But the reason for rushing is different from before. Dad, it's already late. Your food is getting cold. Sorry, I was late talking to Kusunori. I'll bring some more food to the warehouse next time. Oh, they'll love it. Thanks. Sarah has been, and will always be, my irreplaceable daughter. Until that time when there is someone I can truly entrust my daughter to, I will protect her. I secretly renewed my resolve to do so.